Hey guys, welcome to Chris's Daily Dynamite short, sharp videos to help explode your business and boom your income. I hope you're all well. Um, right, today, I'm sorry this is taking a little bit longer than I hoped, but today is the, the final summary of the speakers from the Millionaires College back with you on Sunday. Um, and the final speaker was a chap called Jeff Webb. Jeff is a silver senior executive distributor, so kind of pretty high up, very experienced guy, great speaker, had a lot of good stuff to say. Um, and the title of Jeff's uh, talk was Dreams Do Come True. And he's kind of talking about setting your dreams and the difference between dreams and goals. Um, and he, he started off with just a, a, what I thought was really kind of simple but uh, interesting exercise. He just asked everybody to stand up. So um, if you're somewhere in your house now watching your video um, and you've got enough room to stand up, just stand up a moment. I'm waiting. Okay. Now reach as high as you can. So, you know, stand up, reach really, really high, as high as you possibly can. And then when you stood like that, he said, now just reach a little bit higher. Just stretch a bit. Sorry, I can't do it here because it's feeling quite close, but hopefully you get the point. He said, just reach that a little bit higher. And everyone kind of went, and, you know, you're kind of just able to find an extra tiny centimetre out of, even though we said, reach as high as you can. And his point was, you can always achieve more than you think you can. Everybody has a little bit more in them. And it's all inside of us to, to, to achieve their dreams if they want to. And I thought it was kind of a you know, good, good demonstration of, of kind of a, how you can achieve more than you think you might be able to. So, uh, Jeff told us a little bit about his story. And it was quite a sad story to start off with. And he, he was kind of trying to put the point across that failure actually makes you stronger. So you shouldn't fear it. Uh, he talked a bit about his, his when he first started off, he was sort of happily married. Um, before he got into cleanies or anything like that, he kind of worked for a, a company in London, a su quite successful manager, and with quite a stressful job working, kind of driving down to London, doing his work, driving back again, driving back home. Actually, no, I think remember he, he was staying in London because it was quite a long journey where he was driving down to. Um, and so, you know, even though he didn't see his wife that much, just at weekends and so on, they were working hard, saving hard for their future. You know, they kind of had plans to retire early in his kind of 50s or something like that so that they could kind of um, have a really comfortable life with all of the, the money that he'd earned from his hard work. And his wife died when they were both just 30. And was he Ill, uh, serious illness, I can't remember exactly what he said. But, um, and he kind of just sort of said, obviously, as it would, really knocked him back. Um, but the, the, what he got from that, what he achieved from that, after after kind of you know a few years when he was kind of thinking about where he was going in the future, he kind of realised that you you can't just plan for the future and think right I'm going to work really really hard for 20 or 30 years doing this and then enjoy myself. What you've got to do is work hard but play hard. You know, enjoy things in your life as you go along because you've got no guarantee that your plans in 20 years time will be as you want them to be. So, um, and then what he said was after he, he, he kind of decided that he didn't want to have this big, this sort of hectic job in London. So he started a he started a business, um, and um, the the business was kind of ticking over quite well. Um, and he had some really big orders from companies, and he kind of ordered all of this stock in for this big company. One of the companies that he worked for that he'd ordered all of this stock for um, was very 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 picky on having things delivered exactly at the right time. If you were one day late, then that was it, you know, they'd cancel the order. And uh, Jeff had this order of, of um, I think it was like a, a, a bow, um, you know, kind of, I can't think what the word is, bows that you have on, on um, gifts, you know, kind of uh, sparkly, silvery kind of bows. You know what I mean, anyway. Um, he had this ship full of all of these things coming from whichever country they'd been made from got delayed with storms in the English Channel or something like that. They eventually got all of the stuff, kind of drove all down there, drove all the way back up to their suppliers, got there a bit late, and the guys refused to take it. And basically that was such a huge part of his business, it kind of you know, went bankrupt. Well, I think he avoided going bankrupt, but you know, basically these um, it just kind of completely screwed the business up. So again, what he was saying is, you know, these failures um, that, that affected his business at that time, he actually came out of it kind of working in a better way, looking at, you know, what did we do wrong there, you know, 
having so much with just one one big customer. Um, and, and that's kind of what led him into Clean Easy. So then he kind of started talking about the skills that you can develop to improve your Clean Easy business. He said, when you first start off, what you will find, and he certainly found, was that there'll be a lot of people that you speak to, friends, family, neighbours, or whatever, who sort of say, oh, God, you're not trying that with the Clean Easy, mate. Oh, that will never work, mate. You've got no chance of making a go of that. And he said, let that be a driver to you. Prove them wrong. Because what he said was, one of you will be right. And you don't want it to be them. You want to be right. So make sure you prove them right. And that's what he said. He said their negativity was a big driver for him to work really hard and grow this business and make it successful and prove you right and them wrong. And he said one of the things that he found useful, especially at the beginning, um, when he was kind of had this goal and these dreams to build this really big business, he said it's really good to visualize your goals. So if your goals are you know, holidays or cars or a new house or whatever, have some pictures of the kinds of cars or the kind, the kind of house that you'd love to have and print them off and put them on a goal board and um, just a board with pictures and, and things on just to kind of help you maintain your focus somewhere where you can see that regularly but he did say move it around regularly if you have a goal board in the same place what you find is after a month or two you just kind of walk past it and you don't even see it so move it around put it in a different room put it in the bathroom so you see it while you're getting a wash or a shave Put it in the bedroom so every morning you wake up and you see it. Kind of move it around a bit. Um, and another thing he said was, um, and he, he's got a little acronym, and basically what he said was, desire, not ability, determines your success. So he says, you don't need to come into this business with fantastic skills, you know, to be able to uh, sort of talk to people about the business and present things in a really professional way or anything like that. It's all to do with your desire. Desire is what determines whether you will get out and do the work and learn the skills that you need. Um, and, and how big is your desire? Well, that, that kind of is, is helped by this visualization of your goals. The bigger the desire you have, the more likely your success is going to be. And what he did say, it's no good just having the desire, you need to take actions. And this is something that we talk about a lot in Clean Easy. You, know, you can make lots of plans about where you're going to put the catalogs or how you're going to build a team and so on. But at the end of the day, you've got to walk out that front door and take some actions. So he said, as an example, we're all at a conference today. If you're just writing notes down, don't just write notes, close the book when you get home and then put it on the pile ready for the next conference. Take those actions, make them into, take those notes, sorry, and make them into actions. What are you going to change? What are you going to do differently? And then act on them. You know, say, say right, Wednesday, I'm going to go out and instead of doing this, I'm going to do that. And gradually, your business will improve and improve and improve because you're constantly learning and changing the way you're doing things. And, and those disciplines of getting out and doing those things daily are what will kind of lead you to success. And, and finally, he just said, um, in his experience, successful people spend more time in their stretch zone. And he kind of described that a little bit um, in terms of kind of challenges. You know, people will often come across challenges and... Um, and those challenges may not be obstacles in their way, but just you know, they feel a bit uncomfortable about doing something. It's kind of outside their comfort zone. And he kind of showed um, a little picture, which was kind of like a chart, a bit like you know a roller coaster chart, kind of thing, saying you know, at the top of there, that's kind of where you're feeling really stressed, really kind of stressed out or whatever. And at the bottom, it's just you know really, really comfortable and quite easy, and you know, easy to sort of you know not feeling stressed, stressed at all. And he said the more time you spend at the top then you know, the quicker you get back up there again and you get more comfortable with that and what you find is that your chart gradually goes up and up and up and, and he said it's a little bit like your heartbeat if your heartbeat is sort of going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down then it's good, it means you're healthy if your heartbeat is going, mm, staying very comfortable, doing the same things that I've always done then you may not be physically dead but actually you know, if, if your heartbeat was like that you would be so that was kind of really just a nice little way to sort of finish off. And um, that's the end of those uh, talks about the speakers. I hope you really enjoyed that. I hope you were inspired by it and um, makes you want to come along to the next Millionaires College. Because although I've been kind of going through these things with you over the last few days and weeks, if you're actually there and you can actually hear the speakers and see them and see their slides and everything, you get so much more out of it. So. Um, hopefully you can come along, meet us at the next one. There's, there's Millionaires Colleges, there's the Clean Easy Conferences. Um, you know, every month or two there'll be something to get along to, to to give you information and inspiration. Right, I'm going to shut up now. That was a long, short, sharp video.
Um, I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye for now, guys.